Hey listeners, this is Caleb, part of the pit crew at WebROI, and we're here to help you win the race online. We've created this podcast to help business owners and managers like yourself crush their marketing and get the best return on their investment. So join Denise and me as we detail the must-haves for an incredible marketing strategy. To learn more about us and what we offer, visit webroi.ca, W-E-B-R-O-I dot C-A. Hi there, listeners. This is Caleb here. Uh, I've also got Denise joining me today. And, and if you guys have listened to any of our previous audiobooks, which we really hope that you have, uh, you would recognize our voices. Now, I'm sure you've heard our voices if you have listened, but who really are we? We haven't actually gotten into that. So I kind of want to find out, Denise, now that I've got you here, who are you? Thanks, Caleb. I am the Managing Director of Web ROI, our marketing agency. And Caleb? So I'm the Senior Account Manager for uh, the same marketing agency, of course. We both are here representing Web ROI today. Um, and Denise, what are we going to do? What are we doing here? So new format for us. We're excited about it. And we thought we'd start off with something very basic. It's a foundation in our agency and our business. It's something we talk to potential clients about, all of our existing clients, and it's something we we live by, and that is our return on investment pyramid. That's right. So a return on investment pyramid, it sounds like there's a lot going on in there. And you know what? There actually is. So what we want to do today is we want to break it down. We want to help all of you listeners actually understand what we're talking about and why we do this. As Denise mentioned, this is so important. It's incredibly important to us, to our potential clients, to our current clients, and we do live and breathe it every day. So what I kind of want you listeners to think about right now is if you imagine a pyramid, so a triangle with its point at its top, its widest portion at the bottom, that is how we're setting up this return on investment period uh, py- pyramid here. Um, if you think about something like, uh, for example, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, old psychological thing, uh, kind of function where at, at the bottom is... I don't know. At the I was going to say, do you know it or are you going to get into that? I, I do know it kind of, I, I know it enough uh, to kind of make a, a parallel here, but essentially at the bottom is the most important stuff. Uh, at the top is the least important stuff. So if you're thinking about, okay, well, what do I need right now? You always need those foundational things, the bottom first. And that's kind of the way that we think about this pyramid here. It's almost like a web ROI pyramid of digital marketing needs, uh, a hierarchy of digital marketing needs. And that's kind of the way that we've set it up this way. Um, so if you can kind of imagine that that structure of a triangle or a pyramid where the base is the most important, we always have the base uh, as or we always consider the base to be something like a conversion rate optimized website. So what, is, what does that actually mean? What is a conversion rate optimized website and why do we care so much about it? Great question. So like Hill mentioned, the base of the pyramid, what you're needed for all of your marketing efforts to be successful is a successful website. There is no point in spending money on marketing and bringing all of these people to your website if it doesn't do what you need it to do. And that is to turn those visitors into leads or into potential customers. So how do you do that? What do you look for? This is where we use a 32 point checklist, every website we build to make sure it has all the elements in place that will make that website convert. We look at things like uh, reading patterns. So we know you read left to right, top to bottom, different areas of the page where eyes will linger to make sure we have important information there. We want to make sure it has common elements so that you meet users' expectations. Whether you subconsciously know it or not, there are places on a web page where you would expect to find things like a phone number. It should be in the top right corner. That's just natural for users to go there and expect to find some sort of contact information. So if somebody lands on your page and they have no idea how to contact you, they can't easily find a phone number, they can't easily fill out a form, they're likely just going to leave. And in that case, you've wasted all of your marketing dollars, which are higher up the pyramid, by having that potential customer just leave. And that's that's where we start, a conversion rate optimized website. So No, I think think you got most of it there. I think my question for you is, you know, is a website really necessary today? Can someone get away without a website? I'm going to say yes. If you there, I can think of odd circumstances where maybe not so much, but we live in the world of Google and people search and they look for credibility. They look for all type, you know, they want to make sure they want to know who they're doing business with. And the website is the easiest way to do that. So a credible, good, professional looking website, I would say in 99.9% of cases, it's mandatory. Right. And I think I agree with that. You know, I, 
obviously I work in a digital marketing agency, so I have certain expectations, but when I'm, you know, considering working with a new business or looking for something, I do look for a website first. Like you said, first thing is always a Google search. I think we all do that. We just want to find out what is the company? Are they reputable? Like, are they going to have what I'm looking for? You use Google first. We kind of just, we live there really. Google is our world. Yeah. So speaking of Google, the next step up on the pyramid, so kind of the second level of the pyramid, and this is where things are a little bit different than further up the pyramid, I guess is a way to say it, because here uh, with the second level, which is going to be our pay-per-click advertising and our search engine optimization, those two are actually elements that are in place when somebody is essentially ready to work with you. So you want to make sure that these are there because someone is prepared to actually make that decision, make that step and engage directly with you. Uh, a little bit. I think we actually even just said it too, is when somebody does a Google search, we just talked about the importance of Google. So when somebody is searching for your services, yeah. how do they, how can you show up? Right. Yeah. They're directly looking for either you or what you do at this point. Exactly. So we've got, so there's, there's two elements here. This, this kind of level or layer of the pyramid is split into two and we split it up between pay-per-click advertising and search engine optimization. So on the pay-per-click advertising side, that is your ads, your paid ads, these are ads that show up on Google. So let's say, for example, you are, you are, uh, you know, looking for something on Google and I don't know, let's pretend we are looking for a brand new sweater and you search that sweater and you will see ads for, you know, certain types of sweaters or certain brands that carry sweaters up at the top. And it's actually marked by the word AD beside it on a Google search. That's a Google ad. You as a business would pay for it when somebody clicks on that ad only, not when it's displayed. Uh, and again, just another way of actually getting uh, more people to see your brand, to engage with your brand. And on the flip side, there's another kind of aspect of this on the Google side called search engine optimization. And essentially what that means is how do we optimize our website, our web pages to ensure that Google is seeing them and pushing them to the top of those search engine result pages. Because what we know is if something is higher up on a search engine result page, so when you type something in on Google, the higher, uh, higher up it is on that page, the more likely it is to be clicked. So the more likely someone's going to engage with that website or that web page. However, that doesn't just happen overnight. And you can't just give Google 200 bucks and say, hey, throw me at the top of the page. There's actually Not a lot anymore, of work. anyway. <laughs> exactly. There's a lot of work that goes into that. Maybe, Denise, you can speak to that a little bit because it's not just, it's not an overnight thing and it's definitely not a flip of a switch. Yeah, SEO, uh, search engine optimization, it is not a one-time thing. You cannot just set it and forget it. It is an ongoing process. So there are elements you can do when you're first setting up your website, of course, to help it be found and to have the right um, technical and organic factors. But then there's ongoing things and websites get old. Google has new updates and requirements. And so doing that ongoing optimization will really help your website continuously be found higher up in Google search page results. Right. And then it's confusing. We get asked, you know, what's, what is ads versus organic? And, how, you know, what is, what is the difference between them? And an analogy that we often use is this farming versus hunting. And with paid ads, so PPC or Google ads being the hunting analogy. So if you needed to feed your family or feed your village today, tonight, what would you do? You would go out and you could hunt and you get results right away. They're immediate. That is like a paid ad. You can flick it on with a switch. You can turn your ads on and right away, your website is going to show up potentially first or at the top of the page. Right. SEO organic is more like farming. It's a nurturing. So you need to plant your seeds. You need to care for your crop. You need to water it. You will get a large return. You can feed your entire village over time and continue to see that return but it does take time and effort and ongoing strategy. Okay. And that makes sense. And, and, you know, I think to your point earlier, I get that question all the time is, do I need both? Do I need SEO and PPC? And do businesses really need both? I think so. I, we always recommend both because they have different, depending on the, where your business is too, if you're a newer business, and you don't have a lot of domain authority or you don't have, if you're a newer website, so you're not as uh, credible with Google yet, ads is the quickest way to get your website shown. Um, that doesn't mean though, if you have a really strong organic strategy that you still shouldn't be paying for ads because a competitor could be bidding on your name and as good as your organic results may be, they can still show up ahead of you because it's a paid ad. So I really think you need to look at the two as complementary to each other. Maybe there's... Um, your ads can go in different ebbs and flows depending on your 
season or your sales cycle, but definitely having a strategy for both is really important. Okay. And then I guess a, a kind of a follow-up question to that is if I'm spending all this money on, you know, making sure that my, that my website is set up properly for SEO, and then I start investing money into advertising dollars, do I just forget about my SEO? Like, can I just like stop it? Is it, is it good to go? Or what do we do with SEO from there? From an ongoing strategy. So you do, you, we want to keep both and that's something, and you can maybe speak a lot to what we do with content for our clients, but that's having fresh content on your website. So it's showing Google that your website is still up to date. It's relevant. It's current. You're fine. You're answering questions or you're putting content out there that people are looking for. And that's just the whole part. It's not about just stuffing a page full of keywords or, you know, it's all about the user and Google has changed a strategy towards that. It wants to just show websites or show results that will answer people's inquiries. That's what Google's trying to do. So if you build your website and you write your content with that in mind, you'll naturally or organically um, start to show up for those results. Yeah. And like, like you said there, you know, we, we always focus on kind of an ongoing SEO uh, strategy. So, you know, other ways that we do it, like you mentioned, is we focus on content. So blogging and, and for, you know, a lot of people, at least that I know who are not familiar with the digital world, blogging just seems like this really archaic, like early internet uh, people would, you know, create a blog and just talk about their life there. But that's, that's not exactly what we're talking about when we refer to blogging here, because when we're talking about blogging, we're talking about using keyword specific terms, uh, using keyword research to determine, you know, what terms are actually being searched frequently on Google to determine what kinds of blogs we're writing. When considering these types of things in the pyramid, the way we work up the pyramid is if you have an unlimited budget, money does not an issue for you. I'm going to recommend you're going to do everything that we talked about today. However, if your budget is more restricted or you're looking to only focus on some of these things, this is where you want to start is on the bottom of the pyramid. So those two search elements with paid ads and SEO is where you're going to get your most return. So it makes sense that you start your initial budgets there. This is how you're going to get found by those who need you now. As we move up the pyramid, so we've done the first two layers, the conversion rate optimized website, then the search level. That third level, as we move up, is what we call lead nurturing through email marketing. Now, these are people who may not be searching to need you now, but they may need you in the future. So they visited your website, maybe they've downloaded some of your content, like you had a guide or a checklist or something they were interested in. In exchange, they gave you their email. They weren't ready to contact you for a quote or to get your service right away, but they know who you are. With email marketing, now you can continuously send them other useful information about your business and help stay top of mind. We know email marketing, how many emails do you get in your inbox now? Like how many of them do you actually open? I know people's inboxes are flooded with these kinds of uh, promotional or, or business emails. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we see our open rates going down. Like, frankly, they, over the years, they are dropping and that's okay because even though they're not opening the email, if they see it in your inbox, if they see your company, if they see your branding, that's still a reference for them. Subconsciously, you're showing up in their head. You're showing up in their mind. They're thinking of you. Even when they're hurting delete, they're thinking of you. Um, and that's, and that's really just the goal is that you continuously have that impression on them. There's fantastic softwares out there. We can use automations or different CRMs to create drip campaigns. So it's not like you're manually having to send it out to all of these lists that you can set up different flows and have them be sent out through different periods of time. Yeah, I mean, exactly like you said, you know, I, I get tons of news email newsletters from, you know, every business that I've engaged with and everyone always wants your email for a discount on something else and, and nothing wrong with that do it. But exactly to your point, I don't really open, I open maybe 5% of all the email newsletters that I get, but I see the brand name or I see the logo or I see something on that email every time that I have to dismiss the notification or I'm just, you know, just scrolling through my email. So you mentioned, you mentioned branding and staying top of mind, you know, we'll, we'll get into this more as we move up the pyramid, as we continue up the pyramid, but what, why is branding so important? Like why, why is there this shift in focus towards branding, especially just remaining top of mind, as opposed to just vying for people to open that email. What, what is branding? 
you think about, so you land on somebody's website and you like what they have, or you like what they're saying or what they're offering, and then you don't need it right now and you delete it or, or you just, you don't do anything with it. Yeah. And you move on, you move on to your next page or you move on, keep scrolling through your Instagram, whatever. How, what's the chance that you're going to remember who that company is a month from now, two months from now, you're like, right. oh, there was that cool company that did this. And, and you don't know, you don't remember. And if you did a Google search, maybe you'll find a similar company right. or a competitor and say, okay, this is good enough to have. But if you have something of value or if you can get their email and essentially, usually it's an exchange. You're not just going to give your emails out to anybody, yeah. right? You're exchanging your information, your email for something of value. Like, a good piece of content. Yeah. Well, or even now, a coupon. Or even a coupon. Oh my yeah. gosh, how many coupons have you signed up for? <laughs> and then you can do. But here's the thing: I get all those emails too. How many do you actually unsubscribe to? So I don't unsubscribe from anything. Because it's more work to unsubscribe than just. Ignore. I know. So I just continuously. So now I'm continuously getting these brands of emails into my inbox, which is into my subconscious as I'm deleting them, you're remembering them. And then six months from now, when I think, oh, I do need that fresh patch green grass thing for my <laughs> dog's balcony, their emails are still coming in and I'll be ready to buy. Yeah. So it's, we're going to talk a lot more about branding as we move up. Branding is targeting people who may buy from you one day, which is why the ROI tends to be lower because Again, if people are searching, if you have a searchable product or service, this is really important to actually, this pyramid really applies if your product is searchable. So meaning right. that there's a demand for it, that people know what it is um, and that there's search volume for it. Mm -hmm. You're going to get higher, higher ROI by going after people looking for your products now, as opposed to who may buy from you one day. Right. So that's moving up. So that's our email marketing. It's the start of our branding. It started that lead nurturing. You're nurturing and keeping the, it's still considered a lead because they've already given you your email. So they've kind of, they've entered your system. Mm -hmm. So this is why it's in the middle of the pyramid. We're not quite just at the top of branding and we're not at people looking for you. So they've, they've given some sort of content. You're going to continue to nurture that lead until they're ready to go and buy from you, right. which is similar to our next level of the pyramid in a sense, because it isn't just a cold push advertising and that is through retargeting which is also remarketing they can be interchanged are you a little unsure of how your website and marketing is performing well we have a special offer for all of our podcast listeners all you need to do is visit our website webroi.ca that's w-e-b-r-o-i.ca and fill out the contact form on our website now you need to mention this podcast in the comments of that form. And in return, you can get a free website analysis. So we'll actually take a look at your website, make some recommendations and be able to set up an incredible marketing strategy for you and your business. So don't delay, check it out, send us a form, let us know that you're interested and we will get that analysis started for you. Uh, so, you know, retargeting, remarketing, again, like you said, that the word is interchangeable there, just another form of advertising. And essentially what the goal of this, this type of advertising is to essentially follow someone around and just continually display either the branding or that product or whatever it may be to that individual. It's just continually staying, like we said before, top of mind, remaining at the top of that individual's mind, making sure that they are just consistently aware of them. And Denise, you always have like a I think it's hilarious. I don't think anyone else does. I, you have this hilarious analogy that you always make uh, when it comes to retargeting. And I'll get you to speak to that because I think it makes it makes it make sense. Yeah, let's dive. So technical side, we're going to geek out a bit. What happens when somebody visits your website and you have retargeting or remarketing campaign uh, in place? What they do is you drop what's called cookies onto your browser. So these cookies then allows an advertiser to stalk you. It's like they're following you around the internet and they're stalking you with display ads on other websites or on other platforms. So I go, I'm looking for a new pair of shoes. I found a pair of shoes I like from a certain website. I'm looking at them, not quite ready to buy them, but they look really nice. Cool. Now I'm going to go about my day and do all my, go to different websites. I'm going to check the weather. I'm going to do different things. These pair of shoes will follow me around and they're taunting me. They're holding me there. They're saying, remember these, remember these, remember these. And they follow you around for up to 30 days or depending what your parameters you center on your campaign until you make that purchase. It's creepy, but extremely effective because it's 
it's in your face. You can get those emails too that say, did you leave these in your cart? I mean, did you want a coupon for the, like there's, these are the types of things when you follow somebody around after they're looking for a product, or once you know that they're interested in something by sending ads and shoving it back in their face, the conversion rate skyrockets with these types of campaigns. And, and that's it, right? Is, is as the, the consumer here in this case, it's, it sounds super creepy. Like I don't want, you know, Acme company following me around everywhere that I go and, and, you know, they're showing up on other websites that I'm visiting and I'm still seeing their ads and, you know, they're all over the place, but you can't escape them. Yeah, exactly. But as a business owner, when you flip it, it makes sense, right? You want to keep hitting these people who, you know, Hey, these are individuals who are looking for something that I have, but maybe they're not quite ready to commit yet. Well, this is exactly what you want to do. Stay in front of them, make sure they're seeing you and you alone. You know, they don't really have a chance to look at competitors. And the thing is exactly like you said, their conversion rate skyrocketed skyrockets with this. Why? Because we're suckers. We're all suckers. Suckers. And you can say that consumers don't want that and they don't want to be stalked around. But honestly, when you start, and we're going to talk a little bit more into display ads, when then they start showing you other products based on what you search, it can be extremely convenient. (laughs) So the one thing I was looking at wasn't quite what I wanted. Now all of a sudden I'm seeing ads that are very tailored to me about other different things. And I'm getting introduced to products I may never would have found on my own. I mean, as a, as a consumer, it can also work in your favor. It's very convenient as well. Absolutely. And that's it. And, and as a business, particularly, you know, this works, it works differently for different types of businesses. Like we're not going to assume here that every business can be painted with the same brush, but if you do have a tangible product or service, that is something that somebody might be searching for. It works to the point where it's almost like a confirmation bias because the consumer is seeing it so frequently and they're being reminded of it so frequently. It's almost like, yeah, I was thinking about this yesterday. Oh, I was thinking about this. I've been thinking about this all week. Okay. Well, it's time for me to buy now. Uh, my wife and I were talking about a steam mop. Didn't know steam mops were a thing. We were looking at, we found a steam mop that we like, genuinely actually really liked last night. And we're, I'm, I could not remember the brand or the model of the steam mop, but I'm on, I was on TikTok. I think I was on like websites and I'm seeing ads like on the on the fringes of the site, showing me all like different steam ups. And to the point that we found one and we were like, all right, we should probably try this one. And it wasn't even the same one that I had originally found, but because it was following me around because I, it, I kept being exposed to this ad in the back of my mind, I was like, all right, I'm supposed to have this steam mop. Okay, and, how does a steam mop work? So I guess instead of like water, instead of dipping it into like a, your mop into water, there's a water um, reservoir inside of it and it heats the water and pushes steam out. So it's like antibacterial and antimicrobial because it kills things with heat. It's good for like pets and it has like a piece that can pop off. So you can like steam your microwave and clean it down. It's it's really cool. I got some clean floors. I learned all of this from these ads. This is how well retargeting works. There you go. Did you you buy one? We did. Yeah. See? It's for itself. (laughs) Exactly. There you go, folks. It's all you need. So at the end of the day, it, it may seem like a lot of work or a lot of extra steps or even a little bit maybe unnecessary. But as Denise mentioned at the beginning, if you have the budget for it, it will work. And it's, and it's been proven time and time again, that it will work just by being in front of people's faces. There you go. Let's move to the top two levels of the pyramid now. So we had, again, the foundations website that focused on search lead nurturing. So people who either have given you your email or visited your website. So how you can continuously drip on them. The top two elements of the pyramid are strictly branding. These are push what we call push marketing, I suppose, because you are pushing it out to them. Starting with social media. So social media posts and social media ads, not saying they're not effective. It's just, you are not your target or who your audience is going to. You don't have as much information to start. So social media posts, just posting organically on your page, being shown to your followers or uh, people who like people who friends like something on your page, yeah. I mean, depending on the platform we're talking about, we won't get into too many details. And then of course, paying for social media advertising. So paying to have your ads shown on people's social media platforms. Yeah. Again, they're really effective. How many Instagram ads do you see or different things that are tailored towards you? Because you can do audience targeting and social, you can get quite granular on the types of people you target. The difference is though, these people are not originally searching for your services. Exactly. So you are just taking a chance by pushing it out to the people you think will want it one day. 
Yeah, I love that. I love that that, that example of, of the push versus pull because in in this case where we're pushing, exactly like you said, they're not actively going out and looking for whatever you're selling. They're just going to kind of happen upon it. Whereas lower down the pyramid where things are a little bit more on the pull side, you're almost drawing people in because they're already engaging by searching something related to you. And you're just drawing them in by having a good website or a beautiful advertisement or something like that to actually draw them in. So this is where you're going beyond that and going after them instead of letting them come to you sort of kind of sort of the way to think about it. Uh, and exactly like you said, there are the organic posts. So those are the typical ones, you know, they're, they're, you're not paying to put the post up by any means. You create a beautiful looking image, uh, you know, you create a, a, a caption with hashtags uh, or whatever it may be for whichever social network you're using. And you just hope that people happen upon it. And we do see significantly lower engagement rates and reach with these organic type posts. But as the business continues to grow, you know, you expect that to grow with it. On the flip side, there are the paid ads. Uh, and so there's different ways of doing it. You can actually set up an ad campaign where you have multiple ads that are just shown repeatedly. Or if you have one post that was an organic post that you really like, you can sponsor that post. So you can you know, say, hey, here's 10 bucks. Let's, let's get it shown to more people. And it just increases the reach of that post that way. So there is, I suppose, the possibility that someone may find something, you know, I, I might be scrolling through Instagram. I see a business. I click on their, their profile. I open up their profile. I end up on their website. I end up looking at their products. I end up purchasing something. I guess that is possible, but maybe not as frequently as, as a business would hope that it is. And that's why, and that's why we usually say there's not as the ROI can be lower. So if you're working with a more limited budget, again, focus on those people who are looking for your services. But the nice thing about social media ads is the target level that you can get. So you can look into people's life cycle or their, um, like life events. So say you right. were something in the wedding industry, you can target people who are in the engagement phase of their life and how Facebook knows these things. But whether you actually change your status or not, or just other things that you've been searching yeah. will indicate that you have a wedding coming up. You may be showing your ads to people of things that people may not even know they wanted. So they wouldn't ever be searching for it, but welcome to the wedding industry. All of a sudden you're buying all kinds of stuff. You've never thought you knew you even wanted or needed. <laughs> So depending on your industry, depending on your audience, these can be really, really effective as well. Right. Um, we're not trying to hate on social over here. It's just, again, if we are going to work with more restricted budgets and we always say, go after those people who are searching for you first. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then again, like to your point, you know, there's different tactics within those ads or within social media itself. Yeah. Like there's so many different ways of going about it. Uh, there's the, if, if you're on TikTok or if anyone's on TikTok, there's all those either not challenges, but they, they, they're they ads essentially at the end of the day where they're showing off this brand new product that you can find on Amazon. And it's like the coolest thing ever. It's like lights for your car, or lights for your bathroom or something. And you're like, I didn't even know I needed this, but it looks so cool. I kind of want it. Right. And those are products that don't have probably a ton of search volume because exactly. no one even knows they existed. So yeah. depending on what your product is, and this is something we've come across too, we have clients who have offerings or have products or services that aren't commonly searched because people don't even really know about them then social is a great way to get your, your product out there. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if it goes viral, you're set. And that's why these TikTok exactly. stars are making <laughs> millions. Yeah. yeah. And here we are. <laughs> Wrong career, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know if we're, uh, if we have the personalities be for that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so that's the so social media, like the, the organic and the ad side is actually the second to last level in the pyramid before we move up to the very, the final and the peak of the pyramid. Again, kind of working up from what's most foundational to some of the things that um, you can do if you have the budget for it, uh, as opposed to it having the greatest return on investment. And that last one is display ads. So what are display ads and, and why, why do they end up here at the very top of the pyramid? People may argue we've already talked about display ads and in a way we have. So a display ad is a graphic, a visual graphic of your advertisement. So is retargeting a display ad? Absolutely. It's following them around. Are social media ads a display ad? Absolutely. There's a graphic with those. Display ads work a little bit differently though, because outside of social, you can have your display ads showing on, we'll say we're working within Google, then other websites within the Google network. So right. you run your campaign through Google ads and then it shows your display ads 
on websites within their network, and Google has thousands of websites in their network, um, that will be relevant to your audience. So this is why maybe you're on CNN or on the web uh, other channel, and you see those advertisements down the side, right. then you're targeting people. They may not have visited your website. So that's what makes them different than retargeting because you're showing ads to people who maybe have no idea who you are. They were never on your website before. It's all pure branding. You're showing it to people you think will want to buy from you one day. Right. So would you say those people are, are then, at least from our pyramid, the least likely to return and engage or purchase from your work with you? Again, I think it's going to be really campaign um, specific and product okay. specific. You can get quite targeted with your audiences as well, but display ads are really meant for that that branding and that oh. awareness piece. Okay. So it's not necessarily meant for conversions. I wouldn't say it's a conversion strategy. It's not like you're trying to get all these new customers from it, but all of a sudden you're going to get a lot of people who know who you are right. because you're going to be showing ads. You're going to be showing your brand. So it's a really, really great way to get your brand known. Um, but if you are looking more for leads, if you're looking for more customers, more conversions, then I would stick to more of the search focused stuff. Yeah. Okay. And that makes sense. So yeah, it's, it's purpose is almost more on the branding side. So it still yeah. has, it still has a lot of value. Absolutely. And that's where it's really important. You need to evaluate what your business is. What are you trying to achieve? What are you trying to sell? Where are the people you want to sell to? I and mean, when looking at all of these different strategies. Right. Now I know it's kind of hard. We're talking about a visual Caleb and I've seen this visual daily we probably have it up on our screens right now it's like i think it's my screensaver but if you're rightfully so confused on how we describe this or can't picture it as well as we're trying to explain where can they find this pyramid so i'm actually going to have the link to the to the blog that we've written all about this pyramid so actually a little bit more in depth than what you and i have gone into today right in the description of this podcast so if you guys navigate that way you can jump uh, over there, if you click on it, it'll take you right to our website to the blog that actually describes this. And you'll see the visual that we have. It's a really pretty multicolored uh, pyramid. So you can actually differentiate the different levels. Um, Shout out it, to our designer, Merrick. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, yeah, it just, it, it really helps to visualize this a lot better. And, and it makes a lot of sense when you do actually get to see it. So I do encourage you listening, please do click on that link, check it out, visit the website and see uh, exactly how we have this laid out. And then you can also, you know, Look around the website, you can see the services that we offer, um, and you can also learn more about our team. You can see uh, more information about Denise and myself and the rest of our team as a whole right there on our website. Do not worry, we are currently not running any sort of retargeting campaign, so we will not follow you around for 30 days <laughs> after you visit our website. Yes, correct. So, <laughs> We hope you enjoy this new type of format. We're not entirely sure how 2022 and our podcasts are going to look, but stay tuned. We're hoping to do more like this, where we'll dive into each of those elements of the pyramid and talk a little bit more specifically about all of these services or the different um, aspects of them. Yeah. So we hope to hear you or see, see you. you. <laughs> We hope I mean, you enjoy more of these as they come. <laughs> there you go. Thank you guys for listening. Do you need help with your digital marketing for your business? Contact the experts at Web ROI and get ahead of your competition. Visit our website at webroi.ca. That's W-E-B-R-O-I.ca. Or give us a call at one 877 web roi Thanks for listening. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast so you can get notified every time a new episode drops.